Hi, this is me, the Grand Duchess Rasmus Kone, in the second part of the video. It's April 7th, um, 2015 at 6.14 a.m. So, yeah, so um, continuing with Re Lisa Howard and David Morgan and the harassment. The boy was so aggressive towards me. Everywhere I go, this boy will come. It doesn't matter what the rules were. And they did nothing. They tolerated it. Nothing at all. This is what these idiot, imbecile nurses, Masonic, moronic, imbecile nurses at Walter Reed did. So all I could do is watch them. They sometimes would come and say that they took my vital signs and recorded that patient refused, patient is this, and they would never interact with me. So forth, I had to ask one nurse, like, what happened this weekend? We had a long weekend. What happened this weekend? You refused all vital signs. I said, no, I did not. So I had to jot it down, the name of the nurses and people that I had and so forth. And I realized that they used to, what they do, they would interview all the patients and then say, this one is discharged on Monday, and they would never interview me. Miss, Miss, well, there was an old racist nurse called Cheka, another old racist nurse called Shriver. One day she was taking blood pressure, and she held my hand like this. You are stiffening, stiffen, dick stiffening. I said, bitch, get your fucking hands off me. I said, what are you doing? Your blood pressure, your blood pressure. I said, this old white bitch, I reported her. Excuse my language, and they meant to be offensive. But that's the nigger mentality. How can you take vital signs by just holding somebody's hand, um, blood pressure, without taking um, without the blood pressure machine or a cough? And that's what these old white biddy nurses did. I call them old white biddy because God knows I don't know what the f they were doing because they surely did not interact with me. And going back to the David Morgan case and Lisa Howard and the guy that, that's the guy that made the news and harassed me and shouted and screamed at me and the rest of them look a bit, stay in your room, stay in your room. I had to fire the social worker, Lisa Howard, because she kept on harassing me. You need to talk to him. He's trying very hard. He's my friend. He has a pro. And I said, well, let his behavior change. I have never seen a social worker act like that unless she was having sex with him. And probably they were. I saw them out having Whatever one day, it doesn't matter to me. That is irrelevant. It's their practice that is unsound. And I'm saying this video so that you, I need you to investigate one and I need you to do a swift kick and sever them. If their practice is unsafe and patients are unsafe and they do it to some people and to others and others, they, they, they give them the, the treatment that they should get. That is unfair and that is unethical. I despise Walter Reed as if I never suffered enough in Korea with the rape and assault. They brought back the same people to Walter Reed. The same, some of the same people that assaulted me, insulted me, and harassed me. Now, what kind of mentality, healthcare mentality is that? Uh, what kind of mentality is that? Would you as a healthcare provider bring the rapist or the, the, or the murderer around the victim to live? Isn't that a threat to the victim? Well, it was a threat to me. And you have some of the same Masonic Im um, imbeciles, the ones that raped and assaulted me in Korea, came to Walter Reed. Hi, Ryan. I said, don't, I said, don't you dare effing talk to me. I have that right. I told them I didn't want to be around those people. And they brought them back there. That is unsafe. That, was, that created an unsafe environment for me. I was not at all pleased or amused. It was a degrading, disgusting thing. But that's what those imbeciles do. And they're saying that they want to treat people, um, treat people with assault. They need to be taken away from the military and from its um, chain of command. I have confronted them without being entertained, meaning that the fucking fools are paralyzed. Those fucking niggers of the army and military corps are paralyzed. And when I say niggers, it's an organizational thing, not a color thing. Let's move on to the next abuse. Um, yes, and then there was Wagner, I said it, Wagner, Miss Shriver, and Nurse Checker, who didn't even take vital signs or so forth. We give that. I talk about the food already. Uh, let me see what else is, what else is there. Um, secondly, there was an incident with Sergeant Bradley and Sergeant Miller where she told me that she wanted me, I am not gay. She wanted me on her pussy trail. 
I said, you, I said, bitch, I, I told her, don't you dare talk to me anymore. I left out of that office, reported her to Laney Hall, Matilda Hall, and to Colonel Fairley, of which they did nothing. Imagine that. Sergeant Bradley stole some things out of my room. I think that girl is demented. When I sat with her in front of the psychiatrist, she said, I need more help than he does. This is supposed to be, I don't know what the hell. It was so degrading to say that these people cannot even care. They cannot care for patients. They need more help than, I don't know. It was shocking to see. And so I reported it. I reported it I, to, to major crimes. I've been trying to get a copy of that report to this day, none. But when I go to the, let, let's not talk that. A copy of the report to this day, I have not gotten it. Um, there was another incident where Colonel Fairley said to me, you better be grateful. I said, well, I wouldn't have, I would be grateful. It's nothing to be grateful for. It's thankful. She shouted at me. I said, it's thankful. I wouldn't have to be here if you had done your job. Gratitude is for a job, more than a job done. Thanks is for a job done, and of which they couldn't do. But they did send the police to arrest me for food. Food which you're supposed to have a meal card or some sort of meal allowance, which Sherry's Bradley and Sergeant Miller backdated the records. And to this day, I never had it. And so Colonel Logan offered to give me money out of his own pocket, and I said, no, I would not. So I wrote a report on such account. Everybody is sorry, but nobody did their job. So Colonel Logan moved to Fort Meade, which is a hostile place for me because Colonel Fairley and Colonel um, Kyle, they are the commanders at Fort Meade and at Walter Reed of U.S. Army. And so when all the claims were denied and all the assault, they were in it. They were saying there was some sort of crime with me at Fort Meade. I have never been to Fort Meade. What I did, I destroyed my ID the moment I left my U.S. Army ID, the moment I left Korea, I destroyed all of it, the uniform, the ID. And so when I went to Canada to visit a relative and she presented the ID, then I realized the complication I was in, that the family, my, I have some family members that knew people at Fort Meade, and that if she prevented the ID, then that means that was a duplicate ID because I destroyed it in Korea. There was a fire outside one day, they made a little fire um, to keep themselves warm. And before I jumped on that plane to the United States, I threw that ID in there and I watched it burn. Said Ryan Thomas, the captain, whatever, whatever, I burnt it. I have no sentiments or lawyer and I hold it to no dignities. Um, so therefore, I burnt it like a good, competent and um, healthy person should. So, yes, and we had that done there. Um, so the police came and get me, and we did all of that. I filed that report, and whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, excuse my language. Then we had Colonel Lang, who was doing a boxer evaluation. He said, I can skew this report to make you look really crazy. Just say you had a mental breakdown, say whatever you did, and then, you know, we'll take care of your disabilities. I said, I don't have disabilities. I have a severance package of more than $4 million dollars. And here these bitches are at Walter Reed starting a medical board at Walter Reed because they never could, they couldn't start it anywhere else. So I said to Colonel Lang, get out of my fucking face, you bastard. I did say that. Because he threatened me that if I didn't say I had a mental breakdown, he would skew the reports anyway. And of which Captain Pierce reminded me, Ryan, do you remember why you spent a long time there? Because we can do whatever we like. You spent a long time on the ward because we bullied you we skewed the report and we can make you look crazy well i'm appalled i'm appalled by that and so therefore you must you must do something you must act because a patient should feel safe in his environment not be threatened by the healthcare workers and not be threatened by the staff who should provide care. This is Ryan Tomlinson. This is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. So help me God. Thank you.